Who was Rosie the Riveter for kids? Have you seen this image before? What does it make you think about? For many, this poster represents a character called Rosie the Riveter. Today, we are going to learn more about this cultural icon. Ready? Let's do it. First off, a question. What is a riveter exactly? A riveter is a person whose job is to fasten or secure things using metal pins called rivets. Where can you find rivets? On the hulls of iron ships or on airplanes in the places where the metal skin is attached to the wings. Cool, right? Before World War II, mostly men worked factory jobs doing mechanical work like welding, construction, or, you guessed it, riveting. Things changed when the United States joined the war. Most of the men who had worked in the factories went to go fight in the war, which meant there were a bunch of jobs that needed to be filled, especially since, at the time, a lot of the products being made in factories were needed for the military. Things like weapons, ammunition, airplanes, tanks, and other supplies. Who was left to fill these jobs? Women, of course. So a campaign to recruit female workers began, and Rosie the Riveter was born. The term originated in a song called Rosie the Riveter. Written by Red Evans and John Jacob Loeb in 1942 and released in 1943. A woman named Rosalind P. Walker was the inspiration for the song. At the time, Rosalind was working in a factory that made fighter airplanes for the military. Here is a famous line from the song. All the day long, where the rain or shine, she's a part of the assembly line. She's making history, working for victory. Rosie, the riveter, keeps a sharp look out. And here is an interesting fact. More than 310,000 women, including Rosalind P. Walker, worked in the U.S. aircraft industry in 1943. This means that women made up 65% of the industry's total workforce. Before the war, only 1% of workers were women. That is a huge change in a very short amount of time. The famous We Can Do It poster was created in 1942 by American artist J. Howard Miller. The poster promoted the war effort at home by encouraging all people to work together to help the United States win the war. It later became associated with the Rosie the Riveter campaign and is now the image that most people associate with this iconic character. During the war, Rosie the Riveter also became a symbol of women's rights and feminism, meaning equal rights for men and women. After the war ended, some women chose to return home, while others chose to remain working in the factories. They saw the war experience as an opportunity to break out of traditional gender roles and consider careers that had previously been reserved only for men. Who knew that Rosie the Riveter had such a cool history? Now that we know more about this wartime icon, let's review. True or false? Women were discouraged from working during World War II. False. Women were desperately needed in the workforce, which is why the Rosie the Riveter campaign was created. What is the name of the famous poster by artist J. Howard Miller that most people associated with Rosie the Riveter? We can do it. Fill in the blank. During World War II, Rosie the Riveter became a symbol of blank rights and feminism. Women's. Excellent job, radical riveters. Even though Rosie the Riveter was meant to be a tool to aid war efforts, she has become an icon that promotes strength, perseverance, and equality. Maybe one day you will create an impactful symbol that will inspire others. 
hope you had fun learning with us. Visit us at learnbright.org for thousands of free resources and turnkey solutions for teachers and homeschoolers.